before I even start the show, I like to start off with something that I've I've put together for you, Brandon. All right. Salutations, expressions of greeting, goodwill, courtesy by word, gesture, or ceremony. Well, is that what we're going to do today? We're gonna All right, so now that we're starting with that, greetings and salutations. It's time for another episode of the Real Punnets Podcast, episode 41. And uh, today's episode is going to be a little bit longer than normal because we're going to uh, try to get through some things so we can get on to uh, some Game of Thrones. But first things first, I'd like to give a shout out to Terrence Baker. And uh, this is uh, Terrence Baker. He's a... Uh, comic creator of Baker Comics, and the site, his site will be on the show notes for anyone who wants to check it out. Definitely worthy of checking it out, and uh, hopefully very soon, he and I will have a nice little sit down and maybe be bringing something new to the table here at The Real Pundits, but that's for the future after we get through some Game of Thrones. I'm being replaced after Game of Thrones, folks. Uh, basically, that's, I'm already looking for a new replacement, because we're going to go in the world of classics. Um. Yeah. All right, so... Let's have some trailer talk. We haven't had any trailer talk in quite a while. Would you we like to know just more? Talked about, yeah, we literally just talked about trailers. Every, yeah, but, but every time it's yeah. so, something new. Trailer talk. Would you like to know more? Would you like to know more? I'm Be- doing my part. I'm doing my part. And if some little kid comes, I'm doing my part, then we all know where we're going to. So it looks like the original creator of Starship Troopers has gotten together and pulled every favor he possibly has because... Rico is coming back. Is Rico going to be in this? Rico is coming back. Sue we are Casper. talking about we're going to have Starship Troopers, the TV show. I'm amped. Yeah. I'm saying you can't go wrong with it. I mean, it, it makes sense. We have a, we're legitimately getting a Space Force branch of the military. It only, it's only might as well go. We might as well go with the whole thing. The upside is, is not just Rico who's coming back. Busey's coming back. Is he really? Yes, they're all going to be happy. Roughnecks. Rico's Roughnecks are coming back, and they're basically going to be doing the... They're senior officers, like way high up senior officers. So they may not be on the ground, but they're going to be doing these little cameos and having a new... Batch. A new batch going through. I'm hoping that there's going to, of course, you have to have a Rico's Roughnecks, and if he dies in this and becomes somebody else's Roughnecks, I can accept that. I'm okay with that. But the best part about it is they've all been prepped up for this, so... We They've might have get... been waiting since Starship Troopers two and three and yeah. So this has been something that's been going on for quite a while. Now there's only one person that I've yet to do. Uh, I've yet to see anything in all my research. If we're for sure, but How I Met Your Mother is over with. I bet Neil Patrick Harris would probably make a cameo as like because he was already like the He's highest high as... you can go. He might be the Sky Marshal or something. He, is, he was the Sky Marshal. I didn't think he was actually. He was Sky Marshal. He was when at, he, at the very, at very end. end. Okay, so. Who knows what he could be doing, but I would love to see him go from How I Met Your Mother to... Going back to reprise that role. Role and being that dark as he was at the end of... Mm. It, it could be interesting. Plus, I, I, he, may, he may not come back to it. Um, he might, he, but... It could be a cameo. Even if it's for, like, you know, an episode where he shows but up. you got to remember, when Starship Troopers 2 came out, and then 3... Yeah, and then... The animated. The animated, which was amazing. But Rico was in, I think, three or two and three. The no, not in two. He was in three. He was in three. But Neil Patrick Harris wasn't doing anything at that time, and he still didn't make a cameo in that film. Well, they that, had a different Sky Marshal. Remember that's how. Rico yes, was that's the reason. I was like, there's some reason why I, I don't actually remember. But Rico died in three. Was that Marauder? He died in Marauder. Oh, Marauder, yes. So, well, I guess we'll find out very soon. That's, rather... uh, that's called. Uh, that's called. You know, hitting well, the reset button. But, well, it's not really going to be a reset button because this is going to pick up as an actual part two. Right. So, so instead of the... Instead of what we got as far as their version... Oh, so they're Halloweening it. Everybody's doing it now. Yeah. Except we're getting this as a TV series, which I'm, at this point, there's going to be That's a huge fine. gap of, of TV for a while until we get the Lord of the Rings show, uh, Wheel of Time eventually. Also is gonna be on showing. Amazon, Lord of the Rings and Starship Troopers. I just canceled my Amazon account. I'm going to have to go back. Yes, I'm the only person in America who said, you know what? I'm not going to pay for Prime anymore. Well, that, that makes it a, a different thing. So let's move on to the next big trailer. Because that really wasn't a trailer. It was just more of like industry news. But I had to go into it. So a trailer came out. It was one of those things of we go, finally, it's going to come out. And the Joker trailer came out. And I, I want to start this off because uh, as I talked with... Brandon about this. I'm just going to go ahead and get my parachute on. And before I jump out the plane, 
I'm going to go ahead and make my statement from a comic book point of view as a comic book fan. Now, of course, what people cannot see is uh, Brandon just went through and grabbed the F-bomb, which is an actual physical thing, which don't squeeze that thing too hard, man. I'm not. I'm just gently caressing it. Okay. <laughs> so the Joker trailer came out. As a film person, my film side goes, this is a very well shot. I'm very interested in the way this movie looks. And this is where I go, that's me putting my parachute on. As a comic fan, one of my favorite parts of the Joker is the fact that he has several different origin stories, all lies that he's told to several different people all at the same time, and you never really know the Joker's true origin. Half the fun for me has been we never knew the Joker's origin. Now, of course, the original Red Hood line gives you a lot of that origin. And there's a couple of other stories that actually bring it up. Uh, the Killing Joke also brings it up of where he came from, but it was never sat down and methodically gone through and showing every single detail of what pushed this man to have a bad day. Now, the reason why I bring up the whole bad day thing is there was a movie that came out, Michael Douglas, Falling, Falling down. down. I literally went that direction. And I, I really see this as a, a more of a retelling of Falling Down. Now, if you take it into that direction, this is going to be very interesting, especially how stylized it is. But as the Joker, what made the Joker so much fun, especially against Batman, which his story was the key story, you have this character that you really don't know the background. And they've been keeping up the silly background of what drove this man this mad in every variation of the Joker, even down to the animated series, which even took it further of explaining how many different ways of no one really knows what pushed the Joker. That was the joke in the dark night with the, do you want to know how I got these scars? scars. And he it was pushed a that different story every single time. And he told the story with a level of, this is the honest truth. And now all of a sudden you have this where we're getting a foundation of a Joker story. Now I'm willing to give this movie a try because if they get to the end of the story, since it starts off with him talking to some type of mental therapist for him to go, that's just one story. And if they decide to go through and leave that mystery there, I'm okay with it. But in this trailer showing him going up to Thomas Wayne's house and taking young Bruce Wayne and making him have a smile through the fence. I was like, okay, that's interesting, but is this what we wanted? And I know a lot of things in the, in the especially on in the inner, in the interwebs on the internet is talking about, well, it doesn't matter if you want, we made this film to make the film. I'm all for that. I'm cool with make a film, but there are some things that I think are, if you're going to tread in this, Joaquin Phoenix is an amazing actor. But is this really what we need right now? Do we need a Joker movie? Can we leave the mystery of the Joker as a mystery of several different stories that we've all put together? He's almost like a boogeyman. You giving him a humanity side makes him... I don't want to feel bad for the Joker. I don't want to go, man, he had a rough life. I kind of understand why he had this moment. But I'm willing to go see it because I'm going to give this movie a chance because it looks like it's shot beautifully. And that was me jumping out of the plane because at this point I'm letting Brandon take over and say what he has to say about it. Just because a movie is, is a, is a well-edited trailer doesn't mean it's well shot. Now you can't get certain shots. Being, uh, you cannot get certain shots if you don't have it. You can't, if you've watched enough of Michael Douglas falling down, <laughs> like, I can oh, make I a carbon copy of remake of that film I, and I put forgot. a guy in a clown I'm mask out. and call it an original story. I, I'm out yeah, the you, plane. You're out the plane. <laughs> look, when you make Michael Douglas look tough, there's a problem, all right? At least Michael Douglas in that movie, even in the trailer, he fought back. The Joker would not lay down and take a butt kicking. At any point in the Joker's backstory, does he ever give you the... the Depending on which story you go with. Uh, on the comic side of things, I will say there was a time period where before he donned the, the mantle of the Joker, he took some butt whoops. Let's, let's recap. Which version? Jack Nicholson... You have Jack Nicholson. You have Heath Ledger. You've got Jared Leto, Leto, whatever. Mm -hmm. the, the 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 thugging Joker, mm -hmm. Red Hood Joker. Yeah. All right, man. That that's Jason the, Todd. Jason Todd. Let's just call it what it is. Let's call so it Jason, you have Todd. Jason Todd. At any point, did anybody think, hey, you know, we've got some really good Jokers. 
you know, and I bet this is exactly how this pitch meeting went. Hey, we have destroyed so many origin stories. Can we do it to everybody's favorite villain? I don't think Can it was a, a, an attempt to destroy this villain. Alex, I, yeah, you're out of the plane. Oh yeah, I forgot. I'm, I'm, I can still yell up at the plane. It's, 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 it's Michael Douglas and falling down meets Norman Bates. Oh wow, you're hitting one of mine. It's, <laughs> it's Norman Bates, sir. I, I, I'm. I'm at a, like that's what I thought. I was like, oh cool, they're doing a they're they're really ruining the Joker and making it like falling down. Oh my god, he's Norman Bates. The 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 idea of the Joker is that he's not human. He's you can you know he's a real person. Like you know he's a person. But right. He has no humanity. The dude is just gone. And the the allure is what you were talking about. No true origin story. All of it's just a big web of lies. Nobody really knows where he came from. Even to the person he loves most in the world. He still tries to kill her every so often. There is no humanity left. And the big thing with him is he just wants to make Batman laugh. And they need each other. Like, that's the big thing. So you're going to do a movie of an adult Joker. The, the Joker, I will yell this back up on the plane. They need to show that because it's always been a thing that was never proven. That the Joker was extremely, not extremely, was a lot older than Batman. Okay, were, so he's he's if you go with originals, he, he's seven or Batman's at this point in time seven or eight years old. Joker, uh, he's like based on the way that was looking, he was like twelve or thirteen. Okay, Joker's still forty. So when <laughs> Batman's in his thirties, whooping whooping up on him, Joker's <laughs> like a, Joker's like seventy. So we're now beating up senior citizens. Yeah, come on, Batman. Let's let's make Batman look like a terrible person. You're 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 beating up retired clowns. <laughs> terrible but no come on he's not norman bates you don't need to tell this story this is such a look there is no I, let me preface this i love joaquin phoenix i love joaquin phoenix this is not a shot at joaquin phoenix but there is nothing about that trailer that makes me want to go watch that movie and watch one of my favorite comic book films get butchered in the theater if i ever wanted to watch that if i wanted to watch a comic book character i enjoy get butchered in the theater i will just go buy x-men origins wolverine and watch that again. Wow. Because, hey, guess what? That trailer looked good, too. Okay. You, you, does the plane... Is this in smoke now? Is this, no. like, the plane... No. Are you still going to... I'm not going to go see the film. I have no interest. You come back from watching and say, hey, it was good. Then I'll go, okay, I'll red box it. Because wow. my ability... Like, I'm sorry. I don't want to watch this. The Did anybody say, hey, we just got introduced to a new Joker. Let's have another. And I'm sure there were you people who people soon? hated. People hated Jared Leto's Joker. But see, I think on the Jared Leto's Joker situation, if they just dropped the bomb the way we all, the fan base has said for a very long time, we know who that is. Yeah, just just come out with it. Just make it. Say, tell us it's Jason Todd. That's not the real Joker. The real Joker's dead, dead, and that's you know, fine. You know, hey, you can make him an 80 year old man when he makes Jason Todd into the the Joker. I don't care. But, but it does kind of mess up one little thing, huh? There, if if you really put it in the grand scheme of things, it messes up any Batman Beyond type of situation. Yeah, because the Joker's old and any, Batman's yeah. old, right? Right. So it's always assumed that they're roughly around the same age, which is the one thing. And here's the other it's thing: when a really throwaway assumed. television show on Fox All right. makes your movie look terrible. Are you talking about Gotham? I'm talking about Gotham. I it's have a, issues with Gotham, too. Yeah, yeah, so do I. That's why I called it a throwaway television show on Fox. It's not important to the Batman story. It's not even important to television. <laughs> wow. And you know what this movie's going to be? The movie everybody regrets hoping, being glad Joaquin Phoenix was being the Joker. I don't think it's going to be a thing of any regret. I think that they're literally doing what we were seeing in a lot of the current movies where they reboot things, where they take... You know what? Uh, a market that's I'm going to take back everything I just said. When Joaquin Phoenix makes Jared Leto look good, I, I'll be satisfied. That's it. I'm done. I'm the next movie. Well, I guess that, that plane is, is done. The plane was already in the ground. You and that's have not to... a shot at Joaquin Phoenix. That's a shot at whoever decided to make... Who greenlit this? It's is this our that. first green, who that's greenlit this of this who year? Greenlit this, of who the year. greenlit this film? Who said, hmm, let's wreck, let's wreck the Joker. Hey, you know what? We should take a little bit from Michael Douglas's falling down, a little bit from uh, Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, and make him a sad clown. That's really what it was. I don't think this movie has anything to do with the Joker, except for the fact that when they said, hey, we should make a movie about a clown, kind of like Norman Bates, but also give him the Michael Douglas day. All right, then are you thinking this is a, 
Oh, they call it uh, was it fan Abram, fiction. No, Abrams Twist. No, where you know, hey, I have this movie idea. Hey, let's just take this and shove it into this universe. No, Abrams would have been better at it because I mean that same situation happened. Joker with, would have looked a lot better than wearing the the thing on the head and like this looks like it takes place in the seventies. Yeah, it is supposed to in Gotham seventies. I keep on hearing people on on the internet going, "Oh, it's New York." I'm like, "No, it's Gotham. He it's Gotham." Arkham. He walks into Arkham to get his medicines. So I don't, I don't like it. It's a terrible idea. It's you don't even want to film. comment about the whole Oedipus complex situation of him I and mean, his mother. I already did. I called him Norman Bates. <laughs> well, how can I turn your your mood differently? Maybe some zombie offerings now for this movie. The, the, this the, trailer. Holy crap. Bill Murray, Adam Driver, Steve Buscemi. I don't care what movie they're and doing. And the RZA. And the RZA, yeah. Wearing oh. a, a Woo PS shirt, yeah. a, a hat. I was like, I want that hat. I, you, could put, you could put that cast of characters in this film, right? Which is, by the way, uh, a bit, uh, The Dead Won't Die. Uh, yes, the, dead, it's the dead Don't Die. The Dead Don't Die. You could put this cast of characters in any setting. It could have been a space western. It could have been a romantic comedy. It could have been a vampire film. It could have been any kind of film. And I would have accepted it because it's Bill Murray, Adam Driver, Steve Buscemi, the RZA, uh, Tilda Swinton, Tilda Swinton, Selena Gomez, Selena Danny Go- Glover, yeah. Chloe Savini, Iggy you know Pop what? is in this movie. If Danny Glover does not look up at some point and say, "I'm too old for this," <laughs> this movie has failed miserably. I mean, well, they have it. They they have the whole thing set up to be in that fine line where a lot of are the, some of the greater zombie movies come from, or modern greater zombie movies. Kind of humorous, kind of. I, I don't care if it's slapstick comedy. This could look. This could be shot. This could be a shot-for-shot shot recreation of Poultry Geist. Oh gosh! Starring this cast of characters, and I'll be happy. It looks like it's going to be a fun movie. It's. It looks phenomenal. I'm so excited. And they didn't show me anything in the trailer that I, I felt like ruined the actual trailer. Oh, do you but mean? You want like, to talk about? Go ahead. Do you mean uh, that like was my Avengers, lead-in. Avengers Endgame? Okay, so. We're gonna we're gonna do this, right? Oh, come on, Marvel. Okay, look, I I, you, you I was wrong. It I was wrong. I'll admit okay. it when I was wrong when I said you letting Brie Larson off the lease to go talk crap was gonna cost you money financially. That movie is bat- past a billion dollars. I will eat my hat when I get it. I have to buy a hat to eat it because <laughs> I don't wear them. But I, you know what? I can admit when we I was never talked. No, see, whenever we talked about it, it was never about the thing of will it make money. We said, yeah, it'll make money. No, and opening weekend is my exact words were it'll make money opening weekend. But once people see the movie, it's and after like it'll once the initial craze wears off, it's going to die down, and it didn't. No, and so even though it's it was negatively pressed on one side and positively pressed on another, people went and saw it for themselves, which is the only thing you can ask to do for films. And to me, that's where this is a win. No, it is. It is definitely whether it if for film in general for Captain Marvel it is now for film in general because now, people went out on their own, spent their money to sit, to get their own opinion, get I'm, their I'm own opinion, which is all we honestly I care about is now. Some of us, you know, may have passed on that whole thing, but the whole concept is people were out there. They spent the money and they made their own opinions. I, if, I can't hate on that. No matter what, that's a positive for me. I will tell you. But there's something that has happened recently that made us both go, well... So that leads off, of course, into Avengers 4. Now, they released the first teaser trailer for you know the Avengers Endgame, and I was like, huh, oh, like, this I'm looks in- good. Tony Stark's dying in space. Nebula's with him. They're trapped. The Avengers are looking depressed. Ant-Man shows up at the end. Cool. There might be some hope. That yeah. was all I was thinking. I was like, okay, there is some hope. And I didn't have the quantum realm or your hope. Now, in the, in the next trailer, Captain Marvel's in it. So you're like, okay, well, maybe that's how they go get Tony. But you don't know if they even make it to go get Tony. You don't know if Tony's floating in space the whole film till they defeat Thanos in reverse time. You don't know what happens. And then, and then this trailer. Now, this trailer comes up right when they go through and open up pre-sale tickets, which did phenomenal. They killed it. They... Sh- Certain sites shut down now within hours after releasing tickets. No matter what, tickets. because the hype of this film and everything Marvel's doing, and I was wrong again when I said people are going to people have fatigue. They're tired of superhero films. We talked about this when we saw Infinity, you know, yeah, Infinity, 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 yeah. Infinity Battle, Infinity War. Yeah, that people are going to want to finish. Yeah, finish this sauce. This. this is and people people rushed bought pre. I don't even know if we can go see it um, opening weekend. 
you may be surprised. Like most, more people are selling on eBay anyway. Well, that's the other thing. But I may have done something that has already got us tickets because I was thinking oh, ahead. Yeah. No, but here's the whole thing. You went through, and we've already dropped the ball once. As mm-hmm. soon as we started getting to the end of Infinity War, and we were set up of like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen to them? Hey, by the way, spider man <laughs> Spider-Man coming out. Here's this trailer. Hey, yeah, by the way, he lived. And then uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 might come out if they can handle the director. Oh, we lost our director. Oh, now we have him back. <coughs> yeah. So that's a great that's great news, but I'm saying... What about... But we don't know at the, what capacity that... Right, the Guardians of the Galaxy we've already talked about. We could, could have... be in any, any mixed order of people. But then you drop a trailer that comes out, which... Uh, I'm going. I'm trying my best to avoid the trailers. I really am because I don't want to see anything more. Now I really don't want to see anything more because you've removed. You've the given suspense. away probably one of the most emotional scenes. Two, which is Tony hugging Pepper. Yeah, that was my first one, and then the Captain America and Tony Stark shaking hands, and everybody. Do you going trust to me? Face, I'm like going to face Thanos on Titan. Why show you that? You don't need to see all that. And like I was telling you beforehand. I think that trailer was made for the people who aren't huge fans, who were like rabid fans. Who on the planet didn't go see Avengers Infinity Battle? They went to go see it, but if they don't have a huge background in in Do they care? They've been watching these movies for over a decade now. 11 years. They've been watching these films for... There are There had to be somebody that they were making this demographic for. This is... Yeah. Who? Dum Dums? Them. (laughs) <laughs> them they just they just had another spot so they're like hey release another trailer and they should like, never have touched that oh, one yeah they, ne- they look at trailers man they give away too much all the time every time they do something where i'm like hey they're not giving away nothing do you know the only company not doing that right now hmm. hbo <laughs> i don't know what's going on <laughs> uh, you've got aria looking scared running you're like wait i thought she was basically death You've got the hound looking like he's quivering from fire. You don't know what's going on there. I think there's some whites climbing over the wall at Winterfell. Hey, look, dragons in the snow. That looks pleasant. And yeah. everybody's staring up like they've never seen a dragon before, even though the two characters that are staring up at the dragons are looking at, like, are, have seen the dragons 100,000 times. So why are they looking up? Is Jon Snow on the dragon? Hmm? You don't know. You don't see it in the trailer. And even the other trailers they recently released. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally, there was nothing. It was called Aftermath. It was just an nothing. empty castle. Yeah. You, You're get, like, you get to know that there was a fight at Winterfell, which the trailer initially told you. Which, which there you was, knew was going to happen anyway. And no one was there. Yeah. But you don't know if they died. You don't know if they fled. You don't know if they won. What if they defeated the Night King? What if they're all dead? What if they're underground hiding? Yeah. What if What if now the Night King is marching with his army of Jon Snows <laughs> and <laughs> marching towards Cersei? And now Cersei's going to be killed by a zombie Jamie Lannister. And that's the real battle for the throne, <laughs> which would be the greatest twist of all time. But we, the, the point it. is, as you, you go know, on in this... You, much like Jon Snow, no, know no nothing. nothing. The problem is, we've been seeing this, we've talked about this several times when we see other trailers that... Before we started the podcast, we talked about this for years. years of the whole thing of bad trailer making. And mm-hmm. people feel like they have to show the entire woman... And, and like to to give an analogy to a woman that you meet, you have to see everything before you go buy the ticket. No, leave some mystery. We've lost that ability. Did you just compare the trailers to banging on the first date? Uh, like, not really. Well, you're not but the... call back. I saw everything. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the whole point. But I'm looking at this whole thing of why are you? We why, have buy the no... cow when you get the milk for free. Type basically, thing? yeah. And so then you literally did just use the first. Basically, I did. Yeah, I, I did. But the concept comes down to it is we are giving way too much because we're afraid of. Oh, what if they don't have interest? The interest was done when you showed Tony Stark sending a, a last message to Pepper Potts. Do you know what may has actually made me excited though? Hmm. There's a trailer that has made me excited. Which one? It's a beautiful trailer. Oh, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, a beautiful trailer. trailer. Okay, so let me preface this, and okay, I'm going to let Alex you... go off. I am not a fan <laughs> of big monster films. I've, we've covered this before. I, I, I appreciate Godzilla. I appreciate you know the Mothras, the, the Rodans, the King Kong films. I appreciate them for what they are, but they're not my cup of tea. The only one that was when I was a kid was Gamera. Giant turtle that breathes lasers. I, I, I'm I sorry. It's Good. fantastic. But the King of Monsters trailer shows me a lot. 
but nothing, and I love it, and I'm just so excited to they're see They're still giant... showing a little too much for me, they're, but... They're, I, I, for somebody who doesn't, and maybe that's the point, it's yeah. for somebody that doesn't care enough to go like, oh, they're showing me too much, I just see giant monsters punching each other and throwing fire at each other in the sky, and I'm like, oh, yeah. And to me, I think that was a... Like, they, the actual name of the trailer is called Beautiful, and... It, wow. Somebody has spent a lot of time in a rendering farm making this all look absolutely beautiful. And I'm not using that as like a pun on the actual trailer. It is visually stunning. I'm looking forward to seeing it on a, on a big screen. They're starting to show a little too much. I'll IMAX that movie. Yeah, I'll super IMAX that one. That, that is yeah. worthy of watching. I'll go see it in 3D. <laughs> I'll go see it in cinematic quadrivision. But there's only one movie we can watch in cinematic Oh, quadrivision. yeah. That's Black Dynamite. And the other, the, I forget the name of that. Uh, the, Outlaw Josie. Yeah. Uh, Outlaw something Jones Quincy. No. Oh, well. We'll have to research yeah. that because we talked about it a, almost a that while was a year ago. ago. Almost a year ago. Yeah. It was over a year ago because I think it was like the third or fourth episode that I played that trailer. Wow. Yeah. So either way, Godzilla. I don't even know what happened to that film, but the last I heard about it. I'm going to have to look that one up to go actually see. I'm hoping it's out, hoping hoping it's it. out soon or direct to somewhere. But it looks great. But again, another. Showing a little too much, but you need that because the the field of people who watch big monster movies, we've needed a, a good comeback. For big monster films, though, all you have to do to get people excited about that is show that big monster is doing things. You don't even need to show... Because I know nothing about the story. That's my point. Mm. Like, I know way too much about the Avengers Endgame story already. See. Tony Stark makes it in. They go, to, they go all together as a team. I was a reunited Avengers team with minimal tension. God, it's <laughs> like I'm watching Bohemian Rhapsody again. Go to fa- face Thanos on Titan or whatever planet he's on, and he's all cocky, like, "Oh, you got to do it again." You are correcting. He's baning it. <laughs> You've corrected your mistakes. So you're coming back, Tony Stark. <laughs> so that was where we we're. Let me show you where I've made my home. <laughs> uh, this Let's is... not stand on ceremony here, <laughs> Mister Stark. <laughs> This is going to be a fun year. All right, so... Uh, Captain Marvel shows up. And, like, I'm I'm a Kree, and this gives you power over me? <laughs> oh, this is going to be good. Oh, man. Now I'm just picturing Tom Hardy playing Thanos. <laughs> now I'm picturing Tom Hardy... <laughs> playing Thanos with the Bane mask and the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> oh, another stone. <laughs> this is going to be bad. Are you still amped for it, though? Are you To end this all up, because I wanted to ask this, are you still amped for Endgame? I wasn't. I <laughs> haven't been. They screwed up Thanos in Infinity War. I'm still on that. You're still on that. Yeah, I mean, look, the movie got better the, the, after the third or fourth time I saw it, mm. and maybe it's this is just, at this point, Stockholm Syndrome. But, but you <laughs> watched that one, you said three or four times. Yeah. How many other movies have you honestly can say in the... The past five years. Do you want to know the secret? That you've watched multiple times. Do you times. want to know my secret? What's your secret? I forgot to take the red box back, and since I paid 26 bucks for it, <laughs> <laughs> I figured I'm going to get my money's worth out of it. That's why I watched it. I, I red boxed it again. Uh-huh. Red boxed it again? I, well, no, I red boxed it the first okay. time, okay. and then I forgot to take it back. So you've watched it multiple times. But well, I mean, yeah, because I had to pay is... 26 bucks after paying for the ticket price for the theater. I was it. It's really just about at that point. It's about me getting my money's worth out of it. Well, see, even I've if watched... I don't like it, and then it's now it's on Netflix. Do you know what I have done? I have made sure that I scroll past any list it's on, because after I after I forgot it, I literally did it because I'm going to get my money's worth. I'm going to watch it in in consecutive, right? In consecutive thing, and then I have shoved it behind other DVDs, and I have I avoid it on Netflix, and I don't I don't want to. I don't have you watched it. any movie multiple times recently in the oh, past yeah. five years? Oh yeah, name one. Daybreakers. Oh, okay, that was a good one. Um, I mean, there's a reason why I'm bringing this up. There's something that you don't see a lot of in the current. But am I doing it out of spider enjoyment? That's about out of enjoyment. Oh, that's just Daybreakers. I didn't even watch that out of enjoyment. I mean, the uh, the, the Avengers Endgame out of enjoyment. That was out of spite. My thing is, we're running into an era where we don't see people going to see movies multiple times. I mean, that's not true. Deadpool. I've watched that four times. Definitely. Okay, so there you go. But that's one of how many? Spectre. Okay. 
I'm trying to. There's a reason why because there's not many. No, I don't hear people going. Yo, I saw this movie five times. The way yeah. I saw going to see Lord of the Rings four or five times in the theater. He's going to see Return of the King, King. four or five times. Yeah, I, I don't see many people camping out in front of theaters like you had to do for Phantom Menace. Oh man, I remember that. Yeah, that was terrible, right? You camped out for days trying. I didn't to camp out for days. I just kind of went in the back and because I knew somebody at the theater and they just kind of yeah, locked I the door. <laughs> I had to camp out for days. No, I, that's not true at all. Um, I had a. It's actually that was my I got a day pass from rehab. <laughs> wow! They look, man. When you're a little kid, and they catch you smoking smoking weed. <laughs> at, <laughs> and that's what happens to you. Yeah, man. They they they're like they're either gonna you know press charges or I say I'm a drug addict. Nobody's addicted to weed. So now we made this uh, yeah, entire this real personal there, <laughs> real but personal there. No, no, it was it was. And to be honest with you, the movie was so bad. I'm 13 years old, right? I should be just happy to have a day pass from rehab. The movie was so bad. I enjoyed it. Phantom Menace? No, sir. I enjoyed Phantom Menace. No, sir. The Jingle All the Way kid should have stayed hanging out with Arnold and left Liam Neeson alone. Okay. So that's your point of view? I didn't need to see how C-3PO was built. That was so stupid. What was with Jar Jar? I mean... I let that that part go, too. I can't let that part go. You know what the best part of that film was? Pod racing. Ray Parks. And Ray Parks. Pod racing was the dumbest thing. I enjoyed that scene. I don't need to watch NASCAR. I'm from the <laughs> South. <laughs> yeah, man. You have your... Space that's, NASCAR. We have... That's the reason why I think our podcast works. Holy, we have, sh- we, holy crap. Do you realize huh? that in that film, a poor white trash kid with from a single mom household won a race? It is exactly like NASCAR. <laughs> So now those those that that was you a, just turned this into that was the, the that was the Tatooine version of a trailer park that he so it was Talladega in. Nights all of a sudden that's right <laughs> Wada was back there going shake and bake that's sad that you did that but you there are some iconic movie moments that have come from that movie now as you see I did not go into Attack of the Clones mm. I, I didn't go further than this but I thought Phantom Menace was terrible it, no it was no, enjoyable know, for you, me. it was enjoyable for me. I watched that movie. The point is, I was mad to go see it at a, on a day pass. Hey, you saw it though. I did. You did. I but... did because I was a fan of the other three. I'm telling you, I used to be a hardcore Star Wars fan, and then I watched a Phantom Menace. See, I didn't have this big a problem with Phantom Menace that I had with some of the others. Attack of I the felt Clones like the is where Star War- I felt like the South Park kids watching Indiana Jones of the Crystal Skull. But it, it, let's put things in perspective. Let, let's just pause for a minute because I'm going to make you say, you know, it wasn't that bad. I know how to do it. The Last Jedi. Think about that for a moment. Now we're going to go to Phantom Menace. How was uh, Phantom Menace? Shouldn't have happened. Because if, <laughs> if the Phantom Menace wouldn't have happened, The Last Jedi wouldn't have happened. Oh, you're, you're going to trail this on the way you do all of your uh, yeah. Game of Thrones stuff. You're going to prove that if you did this one thing out... Had we just left well enough alone, the Star Wars fans. We would have had some have amazing never books. Seen, but there's some... He would have never seen an income opportunity... Of making the movies if we were like, please make another one. If they weren't just writing him letters every day. So he said, fine, I'll make another one. And he rushed through those scripts. And because he rushed through those scripts, he gets bombarded at every convention George Lucas ever went to about how much he ruined his own story. As you say that, you're looking at all... As you're looking at all the negatives... I'm going to look at the positives. There's a lot of things that have come from that that you can't put aside now today. You know what, the, you know what is an actual positive for it? The meme of, of people with their picture, people with a picture of uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi from Phantom Menace or from uh, Attack of the Clones or whatever era of that. So it's long-haired, uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, Ewan McGregor, mm-hmm. right? Long-haired Ewan McGregor on people's mantle, people believing he might be Jesus. Well, you have that whole thing to look at. I say Dave Filoni creating Clone Wars. The cartoons would have still happened. Not the way this... Uh, we may have gotten the Phantom we, Menace as a cartoon done by Dave Filoni. But we didn't. But this everything that we've had has also pushed a lot of positives into the world. So as much as you want to push back some things, it brought some positives. Now, eventually brought up some negatives. But we're going to see exactly what happens. Samuel L. Jackson's lightsaber having BMF on it. That that's another positive. That's a positive, and I there are some iconic scenes. Christopher Lee, there's a positive. Oh yeah, that, that's a huge positive. Seeing Christopher Lee in it made that's and maybe that's my problem with it. I can deal with Jar Jar as long as Christopher Lee's in it. So that's uh, 
That's the second movie and the first ten minutes of the first. And one the, the Duel movie. of Fates for me was that, that was, was a really cool. That was a really cool part of the soundtrack. But I mean, the scene that goes derailed. with it derailed. Oh yeah, totally derailed. But what's new? I don't want to talk about Star Wars, man. I know. My point is, I hate it. Okay, but since you hate it, let's talk about something you love. Game of Thrones. Okay, season four. We just we, did three and four. Right. So we left off with, with four. So season five. You, you you ready for season five? Season now, five. You said four for a second there. So I season know. five. Season five. Season five. Oh, what to say about season five? So can, since I'm, how s- many people can you kill at one dinner? Eh, that was that was five. That was not five. That was five, wasn't it? No, that wasn't. Five. That wasn't five. Which scene are you talking about? Which house? Frey's. No, that was seven. That was seven? That was seven. Okay, two that was, seasons of behind. Yeah, I guess so. So, season five, is in Arya's in Bravos. Oh, yeah, that's what the starting of that whole yeah. scenario going on. Uh, t- Tyrion wakes up in a box after he's been, you know, po- pushing. Imp in a box. Po- yeah, you get the dwarf in the box. Uh, the the eunuch is hanging out with him over on the. Uh, they're traveling to go see Daenerys. Daenerys is in Marine. She's made the slavers pretty mad. Because she's uh, freed their slaves. And then stopped the fighting rings. And then stopped the fighting pits, which she then later reopens, which is how Tyrion ends up in her service. But before he gets there, Jorah kidnaps him. Which, you know what? I'm fine with all of that. You Let's had get no... to the part that I'm not fine with. But isn't that, during that, before you get to that, isn't that the first scene where Tyrion sees the shadow of a dragon? Yeah, it's Drogon after he flew away. Way, yeah, so yeah. I mean, he got a chance. To, that, I thought that was a really cool scene. Oh yeah, it was very cool. He had to see it. They're flying over Valyria. It was it was pretty cool. The Stone Men. Jory gets the uh, the grayscale. Let's go to the part that I disliked, because this is when they really deviated from the books. Let's forget about the fact that there's no John Cunnington. Let's forget about that. You're gonna let that we'll go. Forget we'll forget about the whole Golden Golden Company story arc. Fine, I don't care. I mean, I care, but I don't care. Okay. Stannis. He's making his triumphant return. Well, you want burn, baby, burn? Uh, yeah, he's about to go. Uh, he he goes to take on Winterfell after giving Jon Snow the option to, hey, these join, people hate you. Um, join me, or join die. me, and uh, yeah, literally this season. Well, kind of, not really, but we'll get to that. Um, Stannis says, "Hey, side with me. I'll name you Jon Stark and Lord of Winterfell, and, and we uh, can do you this. don't have to put up with these people and the North will rally behind you." And Jon Snow goes, but I have my duties, which is fine. That's definitely a Jon Snow thing. I'm cool with that. Stannis goes to march on, you know, uh, Winterfell against the Boltons. Sansa gets married to Ramsay Bolton. Mm, That's a that terrible was, that was That was a bad That was a situation. rough episode to watch. Uh, making Theon watch it included, which was rougher for Theon. But Theon, you know, of course. You mean Reek? No, yeah. Yeah, he's not Theon yet. Reek? Reek. Well, I thought that was, that was for a... On the book side of things, which I've done my best for all your times of going through this, because I want to bring up the book several times. That was where I draw my line. Well, that not doing Reek properly, not having, not having Ramsey portray himself as Reek first, and then trick, uh, you know, and infiltrate Theon as his prisoner. Yeah, yeah. See, they were, they did the whole Reek story arc wrong. Because that also leaves like you know Ramsey's first wife out of out of the topic of conversation. Station, yeah, because that's where Reek died. Yeah. Or that's where Ramsay died, died, quote unquote. But anyways, so um, Ramsay find out Ramsay Snow finds out he's going to be a brother. I think he gets you know, he also gets legitimized to the Bolton. Mm-hmm. Uh, then he finds out he's going to have a, a baby sibling, mm-hmm. which pushes him out the ranks of because uh, uh, Walter Frey offered uh, Roose Bolton his weight in gold, or his if the if if Ram, Roose Bolton married one of his daughters, he would give him the. Daughter's weight in gold. gold. That was what so it was. he picked the fattest of the daughters. Yeah, and so now he's a very rich man with a very fat wife. Yeah. Ramsey is there. Littlefinger brings Sansa. They they get married. That goes wrong. Stannis invades Winterfell. Sansa escapes with Reek after Reek killed the little girlfriend. I'm recapping this. Yeah, you're as recapping quick pretty as well. Possible. Yeah, you're you're knocking. So it all of this stuff happens. Stannis loses at Winterfell. Yeah. Wah wah. He then, st- in true Stannis duty, he then tells Brienne to do her duty, and she kills him. Yeah, but you you forgot about what inspired his half of an army, what was left. Oh, yeah, because he, even he go put through- his daughter at the stake because his wife went crazy, and then she hung herself. And that's where I was like, wow. We're- that was the one thing that he, that's the thing he loved the most in this world, besides the fire god and himself, was his daughter. He hated his wife. He hated his wife <laughs> real bad. 
Um, but here's where my problem with the deviation starts here, because Sansa should not have married Ramsay. Jane Poole should have, you know, portrayed yeah. him to be Arya. And Stannis is still beyond the wall in the books. Still, to this day, he's sitting by the, He's like Gendry. Gendry's still rowing, and Stannis is sitting beyond the wall. And is this where you started to lose it as no, far as... I didn't lose it until next season. Well, then. Yeah. So this is where so, I have my problems. Okay. Because Stannis is the only one, as I've said numerous times, has the only legitimate claim to the throne. and Everybody just wants to be selfish and not do their... Not be honorable like good old Ned Stark, and that's part of the problem. John... Oh, John. He decides that he's going to stay. Poor John. He just died in this episode. No, this no, season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Sam, first off, Sam elects John to be the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. And then he they have the vote. He beats Alistair Thorne because Bye. of the maester putting the, the one in his little stack. He then gets to behead our favorite uh, City Watch captain, <laughs> City Watch. Jano Slint. Slint. Um, who cries before he gets beheaded. <laughs> uh, Jon Snow then goes to save the wildlings at uh, with the help of uh, Tormund Giants Bane, which has grown on me by this time as one of my favorite characters. By yeah. this time, he is, he's grown yeah, on me that. completely. And especially when he meets Rattleshirt, or excuse me, because they don't call him Rattleshirt in the show, which, which is, is really, dumb. Really. They just call him Lord of Bones, which is his other name. But So when they come across Lord of Bones... Uh, Tormund beats him to death, which is cool to see, you know, and then they have the conversation and then hard home happens and you get to see some good old zombie action. Yeah. That was an impressive, it was a very impressively shot scene. Like everything about it. The giant who gives his life. Not even where I get mad. Jon Snow takes all the wildlings back, but lets them through the wall that night. You know, Melisandre comes back to, you know, in sadness because the army's defeated. Davos mourns that. They all go to bed. Jon Snow gets called out by his steward. And... And he gets... He sees a sign that says traitor and gets stabbed to death. Which is not where they lost me. Because that stuck to the books. Okay. What lost you? Because that was pretty much the ending of that season. Right. No, I'm cool with that. Okay. It's the Stannis thing. Stannis the Stannis dying. thing. All right. And the, the, the non-Jane Poole story. Then in that case, then, if that's what got you, then explain to me season six. Oh, my God. So this is the first season where we've had no books as reference. This, this is where is I'm D&D like, okay. having their own creative rights with with Martin going, eh, try this. No, do this. I think there's still a, a – there was a roadmap. Oh, I'm I, sure I, there I, was. Jon Snow's resurrected within very little tension. That was yeah. very rushed. And that's my problem. This is when it started getting rushed. You have Arya, who has been training all season five as a faceless man. She She's, went blind at the end of season she five. Went fi- blind at the end of season five for killing uh, Marin Ooh. Trant. Right. Killed Marin Trant, who was apparently a pedophile. We knew she, he liked to beat up her sister. Mm. We didn't know he was a pedophile until she took his eyes out. She goes blind, so she's doing her blind training thing, which the, Ar- the best part of this season is the Arya and Bravo story. The absolute best part. You know that it's not... I think it went on for a little too long. I don't. I think she went through enough. I think that her decision to become Arya Stark was a little too... Like, she had just killed the Waif, right? She did not have to say, I'm, I'm Arya Stark, I'm going home. She could have just put the face on there and left. And he'd have been like, huh, okay. But no, she had to announce that she was going home for the audience. Whatever. <laughs> She's... <laughs> Jon Snow's resurrected. Sansa makes it to the wall after Jon Snow hangs all the traitors. Okay, I can dig that. Fine. Sansa makes it to the wall. They, you get to meet one of the most interesting characters in the whole show that comes up later, Lyanna Mormont, mm. the ten-year-old tiny bear. Oh, but my nominal gosh. sassy. Character. I am afraid of that little girl. Yeah, <laughs> that's she's she's like they're like how many men can we expect? She was sixty-two. <laughs> they fight with you know the ability of ten of you. So, hey, all right. And I'm, everyone just goes, yep. Yep, cool. That little girl says it, we follow. Davos apparently just traded one guy for another. Like, he can't lead it beyond his own, which bothered me a little bit. I like the Onion Knight, too. But it's just, you know, he was like, all of a sudden, like, hey, I'm going to follow John Stark. And this guy's dead. Hey, you, can you resurrect people? How does he even know she could do that? All she's done in front of him was he's burn the, people alive. He's the Onion Knight. He knows some things. 
So I'm trying to give him one. Yeah, maybe. But she's definitely just burned people alive, never resurrected. And she's like, that's not my power, but she does it anyway. You have the Cersei storyline going on, Wait. which is the most interesting storyline. There is there is a hint of that, because um, the other... Doris of Mir? Yes. Never met Davos. Okay, okay. But the, the stories eventually had to be shared. Of, I'm I sure know he, of. What? No, they, they didn't even know. the. They just knew they were the Brotherhood Without Bands. Manners. They didn't know who was leading them. Okay, the only so person yeah. they knew that was the Hound, and he was dead. Kind of. He shows back up. but I'm just hoping that somewhere in the background that it was explained that, yeah, there's a guy who's yeah, died like a... just knew. <laughs> Inconsistencies. <laughs> um, no, then you have the most interesting story that I skipped over for season five, uh-huh. which was the Faith Militant Uprising. Mm. Oh, shame. Shame. Dee. Shame. Dee. We forgot about shame. Oh, no, I didn't. I just tried to not picture Lena Headley naked. That That's, wasn't even her anyways. I know. It was a body double, but still not very, uh, not as appealing <laughs> as, uh, as one may have hoped. Uh, I would um, say good CG work. I don't know. Um, but either way, so Lena Headley, uh, she gets naked, has to do the walk of shame, or her body double, or somebody gets naked and does the walk of shame with Lena's Headley's face. Oh, okay. Now, you can't complain about Zombie, zombie Mountain. Yeah, Zombie, zombie Mountain. Zombie was the best thing to come out of that, because Kyburn finally succeeded. Zombie Mountain. So, in season six, the other really interesting storyline is Cersei trying to avoid the now. And by the way, what was wrong with Tommen? His brother got all the testicular fortitude. What the wow. heck? Tommen was just like, oh, yes, Mr. Shoeless Priest, take over my kingdom, imprison my wife and her gay brother. <laughs> nobody cared that Loras was banging. Everybody knew he was banging dudes, but nobody cared till the church got involved. I feel like it was just way over the top there. And the only people that were willing to do something about it was Jamie and Mace Tyrell. Come on. Like, and then when Marjorie walked out, they're like, oh, it's going to be a union of the faith. And they still just had no problem with the fact that Cersei was still going to stand trial, which, of course, we know she didn't. Mm. Phenomenal. Um, so how much, how much of a crazy lady she is at the end of that by blowing up the Sept of Baylor? I'm down for that. And my all-time favorite, okay, that just went that direction. Yep. Tomlin gets to a window, looks out of it, sees everything, and goes, Then you get to find out, bah. You, you, Bran finds out who Jon Snow is. Yes. You do yeah. get to find that at the end, um, which has been a long debated thing. You get to find out that he's a, R plus L equals J or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's been everywhere. But then you also have um, Jon Snow is, um, is, a, is a, he thinks he's, he's a Dornish bastard. Mm-hmm. So he would be Jon Sand, not Jon Snow. He goes through life thinking this now until Sam shows up. Mm-hmm. Sam's at the, uh, has made it to his dad's house, showed him his wilding baby mama <laughs> who took his V card. This is such an original version of your of you telling it. He still he hijacks the sword, goes off to the citadel to become a maester with the uh, baby mama and baby in tow. Yeah. Okay, so you've gotten through that season. Uh, oh no, we haven't gotten to the end of season six yet. Okay, get, finish your ending of season six. Season six, Sam is still at the citadel because he had just made it there. Uh, Lena Headley or Cersei blows up the Sept of Baylor. Tommy Jon jump, Snow jumps out a is window. named... Tommy, yeah, Tommy kills himself. Cersei is named Queen of the Seven Kingdoms. Jon Snow is named King of the North. Danny has been given... Because Euron Greyjoy showed back up mm-hmm. through Balon Greyjoy, which I haven't talked about yet, uh, which is Theon's daddy, Reek's daddy, daddy. over, the, uh, over the, the, the rope bridge. Theon makes it back to the Iron Islands, supports his sister's claim to the Salt Throne, but Euron Greyjoy is like, I'm going to be king of the Iron Islands. And then they drown him and he gets you know, brought up in their religion. And uh, Theon and Yara steal the, sh- the best ships and take them over to Danny, who had just taken, you know, just killed the last of the uh, slavers that she needed to kill to solidify Marine's freedom until she leaves. And so the, she's sailing back. Jon Snow's king of the north. Cersei's queen of the Seven Kingdoms. Bran is a tree wizard on his way back to Winterfell. Hold the Aria. door. Hold yeah, the door. We did, I did skip over the saddest part, where, which is Hodor, <laughs> a character I haven't spoken about yet, who's been carrying Brand around on his back for six seasons, is Two now dead. <laughs> One man leap. Yeah, is now dead because he tried to hold the door. Master which, Blaster. But the best scene of the whole season okay. comes from Walder Frey sitting down at his table asking where his sons are. And Arya, or excuse me, a servant girl, points to the pie and says, they're here. They were <laughs> difficult to carve. And he's like, what? This is seconds. <laughs> and then she takes off the mask. It's Arya Stark, who's a faceless man. 
and says, my name is Arya Stark. I just wanted you to know that it was a Stark. You just wanted the last thing you see to be a Stark smiling down on you. And then she cuts his throat. The end. Season six. <coughs> yeah. So, now that you've gotten through six, rank them. Okay. So, season one is still on top. Okay. Then season three. Okay. Then season two. Mm-hmm. Then season six, mm-hmm. then season four, then season five. Wow. So that just leaves one last season before we jump on the train. Mm-hmm. Yes. How do you feel about this whole series? I want, is what I want to know. I mean, I love the series. Season you mean five. You, se- you know everything I seem yeah, to be about I, it. I, I love this series. Season five was the roughest for me to get through. Is it because no book? Issues? Uh, no, because season six was the one we, we skipped no, but, the book. But, but like, five was so far from the book. Yeah, it's I had the book reference, and like at least the rest of them were kind of close. They changed it. They took liberties here and there. And I was like, okay, but five, they went so far away from it. That's what I said, and no book. The only the only person I supported for the Iron Throne by the end of it, because in the books, he burns his wife. Mm. I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> his wife was crazy and mistreated his daughter. True. Burner. Down for that. And now he's he's going to rescue Jane Poole, and he was trying to convince Jon Snow to come over, but Jon Snow got stabbed instead. So we don't even know what's going to happen there. Is is our, is Melisandre and 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 him going to come over and kill Alistair Thorne and name Jon Snow Jon Stark, and that's how that goes after she resurrects him because she doesn't say she can't do it in the in the books. Who knows how this is going to go? We all have to wait. Indeed, we do. But season six, yeah, because in, for 20 years, we're going to wait. For hey, I'll game. wait. Season six, they took liberties, but it was at least better than season five. I'll agree with you, but I mean, this is really more of your list. But what about you, man? Rank them. Book one, book two. No, no, no. See, that, no. That's, that's the reason why Rank I've been letting by, We're not doing it by the books. No, that's the reason why I've been letting you talk, because my love for Game of Thrones is, is so much in the books that some of this I was watching go, okay. Okay, because there's they the deviation, some of the little trails they go off on, and pointless women's boobies all over the place for no apparent reason. I, I'm at a certain point. I'm like, it's cool. I'm watching the final season just to go. Is this the ending we're gonna get? But everything I'm waiting for is gonna come in in book format. Yeah. So me too. I'm waiting on one's winner. So on that note, you've given your list. We have one more season to go for next week, and we'll be caught up. You've just blurred through quite a few uh, <laughs> scenes yeah, between I five and six. I just told the story of two seasons in, what, 20 minutes, 10 yeah, minutes? Give or take. <laughs> it's not bad. But you have some things you did like about it. Oh, so yeah. that's that's the thing is you're still entertained. Well, I, my, like I said, season five was the only one that was hard for me to get through. And it was literally just because it was... The one thing I could say that did great in season five was there was no tree wizard brand yet because he was still learning how to be a tree wizard. And that was a really important story. I think that, that one was kind of jumped over, but it wasn't... But it wasn't jumped over in a way. It's like it's like go away so I can miss you, and then come back an all knowing tree wizard. That was my other problem. Uh, that was great because imagine if they would have drugged that story along because it's a very slow thing. It doesn't translate good to screen. I think that's my problem because in my head I was like, this is totally gonna be something yeah, well, great they, to we see. Know they, we know they they didn't focus very much on the wolf dreams at the beginning of it. No, there's they a didn't. lot they didn't do for Brand. Brand was very overlooked. Because it wouldn't have translated very well into screen. You show a little bit enough to keep remember, remind people, hey, there's Bran. I didn't even cover the fact that the Hound became a pacifist for a little while. No. Yeah, he, he joined a septum, built a church, watched them all get hung, and then went and killed people. Then joined the Brotherhood Without Banners. And now we enter Season 7 after the Which break. has some great interactions between the Hound and... And everybody. The, oh, yeah. The Hound and everybody. <laughs> but, yeah, we could probably go on about this for a long period of time, but... That is the end of this episode, and so we had a long episode. I'm in, in quite impressed by that. So if you want to contact us or you have anything you want to say, hit us up at mailbag at therealpundits.com. And if you want to find us on Twitter, you look up us under at therealpundits. So that's it for this week. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be doing this again sometime soon and might have trailer talk next week. Maybe. 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 All right. Until that next time. Bye.